tribunal is not the best institution to, to act because it does not have resources to, uh, to go uh, to give uh, to other institutions. But um, I would like to, to, to say something on, uh, on the concept of capacity building, actually. What does capacity building mean? Is uh, bringing about uh, the uh, ability, the skill of the, of the judges there to do their job. I don't think that's, uh, that's entirely correct. I mean, going to the region, I had contact with judges there in, in many, in all the countries in the region, and the level of the judges, of many judges, is quite high. So it's not a question of uh, teaching the judges what to do. I mean, the problem, and it's where the ICTY can assist and is trying to assist, is uh, to um, uh, establish a sort of uh, co cooperation, a partnership with the judges, uh, bearing in mind that, after all, the uh, ICTY is replacing uh, for a, temp a limited uh, time span activity that uh, primarily should be the activity of local jurisdictions, I mean, in terms of ownership. So, giving back the ownership, sharing the experiences that the ICTY had. This is uh, what uh, I... I see can be the contribution to uh, the so-called capacity building in, uh, in the region. Well, the, but it's what we are trying to do, actually. I mean, getting to, as the President has said yesterday, to ownership uh, through partnership with, the, with our jurisdiction. Let me move, uh, Barbara, you were going to say something, and then let me, let me move, because you brought up an, uh, another point on the civil society I want to get to. But go ahead. I think that the ICTY has acted as a tremendous resource. Um, I know that uh, I myself have brought uh, a number of judges and prosecutors for uh, conferences with the uh, ICTY judges and prosecutors. And prior to doing that, there has been a, an exchange of ideas that the prosecutor, the local prosecutors and judges have been asked, what are the issues that you face? in either prosecuting or adjudicating war crimes cases, and they have set forth those issues. There has been an exchange of those issues. Uh, in the last such uh, conference that we did, we had the Bosnian judges basically talk about those particular issues as they are seen in the Bosnian judiciary, and then we heard from the ICTY judiciary and I know that the ICTY has sent a number of judges and prosecutors into the area to have the exchange of ideas so that there would be consistency in the way jurisprudence is handled. But, but there has been, and I, I'm going to get back to this because we'll have a question later on, about some criticisms about this issue of, of, uh, of, of, of these types of training programs, these exchange programs, and whether or not that has been the most viable way for the ICTY to interact with, with these domestic uh, players. Um, a number of you have brought up a point that I want to get to now, and that is this issue of scope of this capacity building. So we agree now that there's a need for this to capacity building, but Judge Bakar, you, you had, I'm going to read a quote from you, which I thought was interesting. You said, developing domestic capacity for the prosecution of international crimes and the application of international law, as clarified by international courts by domestic jurisdictions, is a primary objective uh, to be achieved. But others on the panel have said that the capacity projects focused on war crimes prosecutions alone, that's not enough. That that's only part of the solution. We have to go beyond. We have to empower civil society to understand what these principles are. Uh, Yvonne, you have e even said, and I want to quote, that you have stated the capacity building efforts should include, quote, both as partners and beneficiaries, civil society, the media, universities. So the question to the panel for me is, going beyond the focus on the, on the domestic war crimes trials, is this something the ICTY and the international community should be focusing on in the next stage? That is, not just focusing on, specific, on the specific courts and capacity building, but a much broader focus on the rule of law and civil society as we try to bring up this uh, understanding of what these principles are uh, on accountability and international justice. Thoughts? Yvonne? 
Yes, before getting to, to that issue, j just to add that, that uh, even when you work on a capacity building of the courts, it doesn't suffice just to dwell on, on uh, transfer of knowledge in, in terms of application of international law or, or, or jurisprudence as developed by, by international courts. Uh, skill building is, is very, very important uh, element. So strengthening the capacity of the prosecutors, judges, investigators, police to conduct complex investigation in war crimes cases, to handle witnesses, uh, training on witness, witness protection, all sorts of, of skills that uh, uh, local practitioners have not, uh, had not been experienced uh, uh, before the ICTY started its operation or before the, the war crimes trials uh, started at, at a domestic level. But uh, to, to go back to, to, the, to the question of, of uh, uh, broader inclusion of, of, of uh, other stakeholders, uh, well, in, in principle, uh, courts can successfully, uh, can efficiently operate without civil society, media, universities, and so on. Well, in principle, in practice, for example, in Serbia, civil society has been very instrumental in, in locating and, and uh, in procuring witnesses for, for, for trials and in taking care of, of witness support. But to have a uh, to, to secure a larger and, and a long-term impact of war, war crimes trials, both in the ICTY at, and at the domestic level, it's necessary to build partnership with a uh, larger group of, of, uh, of stakeholders. Uh, the, the trials will not have a, a effect if, if the, 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 the truth that or, or facts that have been established at trials uh, are confined within the courtroom. It has to go out. That outreach is, is, is critical, and to have a to have a meaningful outreach, you need to find partners in a civil society. The media are, are critical because they are conveyors of the message. They can also generate public support or, or public outcry, outcry against, the, against the, the domestic war crimes trials, which even when the trials are ongoing can create a, either an atmosphere of non-bias in which uh, tri crime, uh, trials are taking place or create a, an atmosphere which is not conducive to, to, a, to a fair trial. Also, universities who educate uh, future mm -hmm. decision makers and, and, and political and, and intellectual elites who are to interpret to a larger society the legacy of the, of the both international and domestic courts are, are very important. For what? example, the OSC in Serbia has been working a lot with the with training of journalists and, with, and we, were, we have been working a lot with the university students, especially law students, in promoting the cause of accountability for war crimes. Well, what about, uh, and I think this is an important segue, because the, the, the concept that we can continue to look at the legacy of the ICTY is focusing solely on uh, the capacity building of these courts uh, could be seen clearly as being short-sighted, and I think you're suggesting that. Other panel mem members in, in the sense of where we need to be going, Judge Maloto, on well, this issue? I yeah. I? I think it is important to appreciate that there is a limit to what any institution can do. Obviously, uh, the ICTY is well suited to make a contribution within the courts and, and within the implementation of international humanitarian law uh, in, the, in, the, in the region. Other stakeholders obviously are important. Uh, universities, as you say, civil society, they're all important uh, components. Mm. Uh, it is important that they get, be, be made interested in the in the capacity building and that they could make their own contribution. But I think to, to assume that the ICTY can be effective in spreading itself thin beyond the courts is to it's make too it, much. It's, it's just too much. It's okay. to make it ineffective. Right. You know, obviously, in, in conjunction with other stakeholders, yes, but it cannot do but it. Not alone. alone. Shall I? Yeah, no, I think that's absolutely right, and, and excuse me, I think that it, obviously the UN writ large, the United Nations has a role to play in supporting national communities in addressing the rule of law and strengthening the rule of law in their country, in establishing transitional justice mechanisms that uh, respond to the needs of victims and that reflect the desire of the community to reflect on the legacy of large-scale abuse in their community. So there is a very large question about how we go about, as an international community, supporting national actors to strengthen the rule of law, to strengthen not only their courts, but the many other actors that contribute to a rule of law, 
how we help them to determine what the nature of transitional justice mechanisms that are appropriate for their own vision, how they are empowered to decide and to sort of outline what capacities they feel they need to have strengthened. That is a much bigger question, I think, and involves many other stakeholders um, than the ICTY, although the ICTY obviously has critical skills that it can help to develop and build. But, the, but I think what's important to say in this regard is what, we've, what we have all experienced with respect, both the nationals and the internationals that have worked on the, the issue of the former Yugoslavia for over 17 years now, what we've come out of that with is this greater understanding. And that's what I think we don't want to lose. I think it's critical that we have a discussion about how we, how, what kind of help has been given to develop specific capacities to prosecute serious international crimes. And I'm not minimizing that, but I think we also have all learned greater lessons not greater in the sense that they're more important, but broader lessons about how, what is the nature of support that the international community should provide and what is the role of the international expertise as support for national Good engagement, night. national understanding of how, we, how national communities want to address and strengthen the rule of law in their own Much context. broader scope, exactly. Yeah. Just, just to say and to confirm for me that civil society is a key actor of the whole process, has to be involved into this uh, issue. I think the citizens is the objective of, uh, of the society, to have the citizens having trust and confidence in their police, justice, and overall rule of law uh, system. I mentioned police because I think in the domestic prosecution of war crimes, I think police has also a key role to play. It's often not mentioned or, or neglected in that, uh, in that respect. So I think these are the, the key actors, and we have to somehow support them into participating into this uh, process. And on the side of the, of, the, of the EU, this obsession of rule of law is today very, uh, very, very present, maybe more than it was in the past. We've created, there are two reasons for that. I think we created a, a single market, a single currency. Now we, create in, we are in the process of creating a single judicial space. So therefore, in that system, you need trust and confidence. If you don't have that, it doesn't work. So any newcomer into the club will have to demonstrate that there is trust and confidence with the justice systems. Because our citizens can be extradited. There are these European arrest mandates, uh, arrest warrants. There are uh, all this, this Europol, Eurojust, all these new instruments that have been uh, created. And this is the, uh, the aim that we are addressing. So overall justice and, in, of course, war crimes as part of that process are, have to be tackled clearly. Okay. Georgia? Or David? David, you go ahead. Go ahead, please. Um, Mark, I think we need to take a step back. Uh, first of all, in terms of ownership, um, it's not a question of whether we want local jurisdictions to have or not have ownership. Under the European Convention on Human Rights and any number of other obligations, that ownership exists on the local level. It's not a question. Um, the second point is the ICTY's greatest legacy is its jurisprudence and the factual basis that's been laid by the work that's been done at the ICTY. Because it's now ending its existence, the ICTY and the international community expects national systems to become the stewards of that jurisprudence. And you can't expect them to become the, jur the, the stewards of that jurisprudence, to develop it and advance it the way the international community expects it to be advanced without doing your part to ensure that they have both the tools and the structure within which to work. So that leads me to the third point, which I, I may be jumping the gun, but you have to have a framework to work from. And in dealing with that framework, I think the most important thing is to understand that this whole process is not about us, the international side. The whole process really is about developing what's already there in the national side to deal effectively and to expectation with what we're asking them to 